timestamps in the description. So a couple videos back, I got this Hecatomb 10 Happy Mask. Now I'm also a cult leader who worships Dante, so I decided, you know it'd be a cool idea, Hecatomb 100. Now I originally planned for all to be on this Happy Mask, but then I switched clients and was no longer able to track the completions. And I could have done this by hand and write down every single completion. Or I could buy 10 Happy Masks with Hecatomb 1 and level them all to Hecatomb 10. And this in my mind was a great idea, so I began running Floor 7. Now you may ask why Floor 7, why not just spam it since Floor for easy completions? Now, first off, I need cash. If I'm gonna buy full warehouse Happy Masks and then hypermax them to my heart's content, I'm gonna need some bank. Okay, so why Floor 7? Well, it's the floor I'm most familiar with, and I'm close to Diamond Head, which means... MONEY! Also, a bit of context from the last video to this video. So in between videos, give or take about 100 runs, I dropped the handle and bought a term, sold a term, and bought pets, uh, bought accessory, and minions. Now, it was all same old same old, I just got hyper and it was nearing Thanksgiving, which means I wouldn't be running as much. I mean, this isn't gonna take me like two months, right? So runs were going smooth and I was getting up to 600 runs pretty fast. Now what I started realizing around this point is that Floor 7 is just plain boring and Party Fighter sucks. Cause if there's one thing I can trust more than being let down by the RNG gods, it's that I'll forever be burdened by trash parties. Now even if I cut some slack for runs I did, it still took 24 hours to get from 400 runs to 600 runs. Which is assuming I did 7 minutes per run, no downtime, no queuing for monkey find, or no selling in which in that case, it'd be more like like 33 hours, give or take. And for only 200 runs that I did, only 100 counted for this video since I didn't wear the Happy Mask for the first 100. Anyways, I got 200 drops in that time, a handle on a scroll, so I was making pretty good bank. In fact, I had 200 mil in my purse in that time. Until I made this decision. Oh boy, I did not realize how bad a decision this was at the time. How can a single decision be that bad? I mean, it's like it'll screw me over for weeks to come, right? Oh, how naive I was. So after selling the Hyperion to get a Terminator, I was excited. Oh boy, I can finally do Master Mode! Here, look at my de- Why is it only doing 2 mil? Ah, it must be my armor. Let's just- Okay, uh, no. Uh, let's try my accessories at- No, my pets? No. Uh-oh. I made a bad decision, and from this decision I plan on quitting for a while to let my minions grind up some coins to fix the issue. I didn't really like any other part of the game other than dungeons, and I couldn't really even do floor 6 anymore. I was back to square one. So I put everything in the chest and logged off for what I thought would be the final time, ending everything. But I wanted to give it one last try, so I got on the next day, troubleshooting, and after not finding anything, I looked at my juju, seeing if I missed any in key enchants, until I saw one key thing. I'd forgotten to dungeonize it. Whoops. <laughs> so I'm back on track now, even though I forgot a key detail in making the bow. Whoops. But now I gotta learn to play a new class. Archer. It's not any different from Berserker, you know, it's same set, same pet. But, you need to have 400% crit chance now. Why? Well, Terminator divides a crit chance by 4, which isn't an easy task until you look at Fortuitous. This is a magical power that allows you to get 100% crit chance. You'd usually never use it because damage powers are always better. But with a Terminator, having 400% crit chance is needed. Despite even all of this, with Fortuitous and my armor being on Ancient, uh, I was still not even hitting the 100%, I was only hitting 95. But this is all good since I was the main DPS. Pause! Why are you black on Floor 7? Well, you see, when I sold the hype and bought the term, I thought I was done with Floor 7. Then I saw I was 400 runs away from uh, the diamond head, I was like, ooh, I forgot. So you sold your Hyperion, nearly quit the game, all for nothing? Yep, I, I never said I was the brightest. Anyways, I was back on the grind for Hyperion. But in a slight turn of events, I was streaming and dropped a handle. Yay! But the Hyperion is worthless if you don't have a fullest gold, which costs 900 mil, and I didn't have that. Until I met an old friend. Five dollars for me. So I met with my buddy after the stream when we were talking, and we made a deal. He would lend me 552 mil if I gave him 100 mil in interest, and made him a giant side. So I now had a high period in a term. Happy as can be, but there's one issue. I had one week to pay off 652 million coins of debt. Now I was nearing towards 700 runs, and I promised him I could pay him back in a week since I was sure I could have the diamond head by then. Then he got off, and I played one run of dungeons, and said, uh-oh, and went to bed. 
So I hate having debts and having stuff looming over my head. And I was worried that I wasn't gonna be able to pay him back fast enough. So I did the stupid thing and sold my term to pay him back. I promise, I promise this is the final time I sold them. I learned my lesson. Please do not bully me. Anyways, with the debt paid off and my Terminator gone, I begin to grind for the Terminator again. Now with a brand new Hyperion in my hand, I begin to finish up the rest of Floor 7. And with past experiences behind me, I am never selling this thing. In fact, even now, I'm so scared to do something that stupid to get I soulbound it. I also did the math. If I drop one scroll within that time and don't use Kismets, I will have enough money by the end of Floor 7 to buy back a term and head to Master Mode. Now, I won't bore you with the same old gameplay and talking about any of that. But the real question is how much money in total did I make from Floor 7? 1,000 runs in total. So at 1,000 runs, I dropped 9 RNG drops, 7 scrolls, and 2 handles, totaling at 3.5 billion. But this isn't 100% true since around 700 runs were rerolled, which costs 1.3 mil per, so minus 910 mil, we are left with a total profit of 2.6 billion coins. And as for smaller profits like Essences or Ecom, I won't count them since they're probably lost as stupidity anyways. Now time for the final question, did I get terminated back after 1,000 runs of Floor 7? And the answer is yes, I actually got it like at 850 runs in, I don't really know how. After you do so many runs of Floor 7, your brain kind of just like rots or something. Now what did I do with the Diamond Head? Did I keep it as a memento as a great deal of hardships I overcame, like Party Finder, Quitting, Burnout, and my social life? No, I immediately sold that thing. I will never do Floor 7 again, I hate my life because of it. Anyways, with that being done, time for- I'm gonna kill myself! Okay, no need to cut me off. Anyways, Master Mode is like basic dungeons except on steroids. Take a Shadow was asked, for example. He goes from a 10 million health easy one-shot pleb to a BP Giga Chad who one-shots me. Now, I wanted to immediately start out on M5, but due to complications, I decided to go to M3. Now, M3 is not as nearly as profitable as M5, but its XP is similar to Floor 7's, and you can drop Master Storage, which buff your damage by 5% in Master Mode, and also sell for a decent price depending on which floor you play. Like, if you're playing on M3, drop the first star, and M7, dropping the final Master Star. Also, Hypixel, why not 7 stars going up from each floor, huh? You already made a new star system for the Master Stars, so why not? Anyways, anyways. The start to Master Mode was brutal to say the least, because it's not just about how high of stats you have, nor the gear you got. Although those play a huge factor in survivability, if you don't have actual skill, you will die. Even though I'm kind of 43 and Dungeon Gear is 357% more effective on me, I still get killed by these dudes! But a lot of what you learn is just muscle memory, like an Ice Spray, which freezes enemies, and a Gyro, which sucks all enemies nearby to the same block. But the hardest part for me wasn't learning Ice Sprays or Gyro, no 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 no. It was the inventory setup, because in Master Mode, you need to use a lot of stuff. And you need a quick swap to it, and my main weapon was in my first slot, but with this new inventory setup, it was in the second slot. So countless times I'd be trying to teleport away and just shoot my term and then immediately died. But either way, I learned it pretty quick, since on M3 all you need is S, which requires just a basic clear, not a full clear. I'll talk more about this later. But for now, I was feeling confident. Confident enough to do M5. But... I was going to need an upgrade, so I bought more Master Charge, shoved them on my Terminator and armor, and shit myself off to M5. I have crippling depression! Now how hard was M5? Well let's just say I died at least once per run in the beginning, but I was only slowly learning it. Oh boy. M5 from the beginning went from a monumental task to a manageable one, but if I wanted to stop dying I needed to do one thing. Take off the happy mask. Now, Hakatum only gets stronger when you complete four with that item on your head. Meaning if I swapped off my Happy Mask, I couldn't do the challenge. So, was I destined to never do M5? I was kicked from parties left and right, and I was dying every single run. Was I meant to stay back on M3 and not progress further? Well, there is one ancient technique that I was told about. One that was just what I was looking for. Take the mask off and clear, and put it on a boss room. Since I'm only struggling to clear, and since in boss room, the tank takes all the aggro and takes 70% of your damage, meaning I was chillin'. So even though I wanted to wear happy masks all the way through, I had to do this so I could buy a warehouse full of happy masks. And I'm not joking. Here's proof. Also, M5 makes so much profit, even from not rare items like this. This is one main profit, and it's common, dude. But there is one thing I really need to talk about, since I started master mode, and even in floor 7. Alright, woo! So if you haven't played Floor 7 or any Master Mode Floor, you'll be fully aware of what this talks about. Now, if you're bad in a party and you're struggling and dragging your team down, or even if you're a lower kata, you should be expected to be kicked from a party, no issues with this. Now, let's say you have like one bad run out of the five you ran, not saying like everyone's gonna be like bad every five, but just one bad run. 
a lot of players will leave when you have just this one bad run, which even this is still fine with me. Just to clarify, you can have four deaths in F6 and M6 above, and F5 and M5 below is three deaths. This is for S+, plus, not for S. But I've seen it way too many times where one death happens, and then one person leaves and then the entire party falls apart because of it. One death is not the end of the world. If there's more than one death, not a big deal. If you're past three, it kind of sucks, but just keep going through it. But here is the main thing. I wouldn't mind people leaving parties for one death if it was just at the end of the run. Mid run, people leave because there is one death, and this is really apparent on floor 7 and later Mastermind floors. And I'm not saying every single run is like this or everyone who does dungeon sucks, but it's gotten really bad recently. But enough with the bad, let's talk about some highlights. Since I've done dungeons, I've actually met some genuinely nice people. Some people are on purposes just because they're kind of chill. They run with me and we are aware that things happen in runs. We don't wah wah baby out of it if someone dies or we don't leave and run, we finish it and move on. And I gotta admit, I've surprisingly met a lot of nice people where we stick together through dozens of runs. Even if we get bad runs in the process, we just stick together because we're just having fun. And honestly, even with the bad of dungeons, I'd say I still enjoyed it more than I hated it. Despite all the endless grinds and all that, I actually enjoyed it more than I thought I did. I just genuinely made a lot of nice chill people, dude, and it was like very nice just chilling on a call, running with them. It was probably some of the best runs I've ever done. But anyways, with all that said, here we are. I wear a mask with a smile for hours at a time. Here we are. The final happy mask. Over the course of the last two months while working on this video, I've actually had a pretty great time. Now, I may have gotten burnt out at times, may have been so done with all of this, but from a small community I've been in, whether it's in dungeons or around Dante, I gotta say, it would not have been possible without y'all. And with all of that said, I think this would be the perfect spot to put you. So, how long did I spend making this video? Well, just in Dungeons alone, assuming that for the 500 F7s I did took 7 minutes per run, and the M5s and M3s I did took 3 minutes per run, that means this took 83 hours to record. Which is not the case at all, because it definitely took more like 100 hours plus, but I'm not complaining. But it doesn't matter now, since it's all set and done. And I'm finally free. So yep, we made it to the end of the video, and currently I got a giveaway going on in the Discord server down below. But right now, I want to give a special thanks to Bogus, Falls Forest Vision, Mr. Mango, Lucy Goosey, I'm Lunar, and all the other people who have joined the Discord. I genuinely could not have done this without y'all. Music credits down below, and thank y'all for watching.